if as a movement we start uh, you earlier talked about the word micro aggression but the other opposite could be micro control because mm. we cannot micro control our members maybe it was possible when everybody was living in the temples but now we are largely a congregation based movement so to some extent if through discussions like these some broad principles are understood then future generations of devotees they can adopt those principles because in general in our movement i don't know as the move, as the as we are spreading how much control we can ever have on anyone especially when people are having their own their own lives and their own careers and they're not really living in temples so rather than sort of defining a path this is the path to go if we can help people develop their inner compass then they will know the direction to go in now, i'm not saying we don't have a path but the fact that we are ourselves in uncharted territory now and uh, in many ways the world has changed as compared to few uh, few decades ago what to speak of few centuries ago so how much is it possible to clearly define this is what prabhupad wanted and anything different from this is uh, is going to be is wrong because over that itself we will end up having debates so if we could give broad principles rather than specifics wouldn't that well what, what it'll come down to is uh, as it has throughout the generations in all vedic and even buddhist sampradayas uh, is guru vachan okay. guru says this this is how we understand prabhupad and those who want they follow and those who don't they, they prefer someone else's interpretation that's what it, that's how i see it's going to come down practically i think it's going to be very very as time goes on it's going to be more and more difficult to try to impose some orthopraxis on the whole of iskon as you say yeah but guru vachan should be enough yes so so by here guru vachan you are referring to shri prabhupada's the, words or the vachan no i know i'm saying guru. individual gurus will okay. say this is how we're following shri prabhupada okay yeah and it, it may be different to others yeah i'm talking about author praxis i'm just reviewing a book that jayadeva maharaj asked me to go through on kirtan standards and that prabhupada clearly gave but it seems impossible to me that we can ever get back to that yes and unless we have a unless we have a sea change within the whole movement about what the kirtan standard should be because it might be possible but uh one challenge if you go to go back yeah so uh the so one challenge would so, be that he does quote me in that book as saying in in the temple well he specifically mentions this gone in salem in south india where they sing the the mongolarty in the tune that shila prapad wanted which mm. which is rare in the whole movement um oh, okay so so what i'm saying yeah that because i happen to be the guru overseeing the devotees there and i say it should be done like this they do it like that but if you go somewhere else they might not uh, say well you know whatever <laughs> so it it's we can th- there's an example of um differences of approach largely according the f- most followers are not going to think about things even as deeply as you and i are discussing now and we're we're really only touching the surface as you know Yes, but uh most followers want to f- want to follow hmm. they they don't like you're saying most of nowadays are, are uh they what are they called congregation followers they have their job they have their families they don't have they don't have time and maybe not the inclination to get into all kinds of abstruse issues they want to come to the temple and chant hari krishna and hear about krishna hmm. and someone appeals to them it, it it's it's not totally non philosophical but it it appeals to their heart and they say yeah i want to be part of this they don't think about all the, the different issues and this and that and they they 
And actually, that's one of the things that the guru does. He's supposed to learn from his guru, learn from Shastra, learn from tradition, and he represents that to his disciples because you can't you can't individually study all the teachings of the even to study everything Srila Prabhupada gave. I mean, it's 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 so vast and so deep. So practically the disciples they rely on the gurus to to represent Prabhupada for them. And there are going to be differences in outlook and uh, how to negotiate that. The Catholic Church yes, does a pretty good job, I guess, by having different uh, orders, orders yes, and are. what do they call that? Different rites. But they've had splits also, haven't they? Yes, Maharaj. And... But, they're, but they're not doing too... They're not doing too bad in the sense of keeping all different different outlooks together. Yes, so much. I've heard it said that that Srila Prabhupada said we should study the Catholic Church for their organization and everything. It's a, it's very that's very much a top down movement, isn't it? As opposed to the Protestant churches, which are supposed to be. Me and God, me and Jesus. Yes. Right, the original Ritvikism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is true. So, so like what, what I'm saying is that I think the, the, the gurus, by their examples, even if the gurus don't... Like I gave the example of Mahavishnu Maharaj. I, mean, I hope Mah Mahavishnu Maharaj doesn't mind me giving this example. I, I'm, I think he won't because he knows that you know, I have all great love and respect for him. I don't think he's made a, a very deep philosophical analysis about why he dresses the way he does and his, you could say, zany style. But he does it, and it has its effects. You, may, you could say it's not grave enough, but many people seem to appreciate it. So 